Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Swade, and welcome to the new online gaming sensation that is sweeping the nation, and it's called Civ 3 Online Multiplayer Arena. So I will be observing this game of QC, Civ 3 Multiplayer QC, the QC mod for Civ 3 Multiplayer, if that's not already clear, and I will be casting it. I'll be like a shoutcaster for this match as it goes on. So yeah, in this game, the teams are going to be 2, 3, 4 versus 5, 6, 7, 8. So meet Sasusun and Gunnar Biebs against Panopticon, Orps, Still Token, and SOS. So uh, what that means is that the, the green civ over here, the Japan Japanese, uh, the Ottomans, and the Iroquois are on a team together against the Mongols, Spanish, French, and the Dutch. So we're going to have to see how they do. So we're going to call this team, uh, the Meat, Saucy Sun, Gunnar Beebs team, to be Team Dark. And this team is going to be Team Light, since these are all dark shades of colors, and these are all light shades of colors. I don't know if this one's as light, the, the, the weird kind of orangey yellow one, but eh, we'll count it as light. Just like a, a pastel gold, maybe. So yeah, Team Dark versus Team Light. So, uh, based on the players in this teams, I'd say normally that the, the four-player team would have the advantage here. Uh, but the spawn locations seem like pretty solid for Team Dark. So, one of the reasons for that is you got J Japan right here, and the Ottomans right here. And these two can really push down upon the Spanish. Uh, the Spanish are, like, easily the weakest Civ in QC. Um, their one point of power is their unique unit, which is the Conquistador. Uh, but you don't get the Conquistador until very, very late. And early on, they just have no traits that will really help them out uh, defend against the Onslaught. Meanwhile, you have the Ottomans who get Industrious, which is a very powerful trait early on, and you have the Japanese who get uh, Militaristic and eh, even Religious is sometimes useful. Uh, <laughs> that's a lie, sorry. It's not useful for Spain, maybe for Japan. Uh, one thing that the Religious trait allows Japan to do is like do like very aggressive plants next to an opposing Civ. And then once you do that, you can use those cultural buildings like the cheap temples and cheap cathedrals to kind of like control uh, territory. So for example, um, let's say there was an iron right here. And let's say Spain planted a city here. So normally Spain would have that iron, but if Japan puts a city here and then builds a bunch of cultural buildings, then the iron will flip over to Japan and Japan will have access to the iron. So uh, that works kind of well for Japan since they're a militaristic civ. Spain is just so weak in the early game that unless you're like have very good land or in a very dominant position, um, you won't really be able to make use of that extra culture there for anything crazy plays like that. So I'm just going to issue a warning to Orps, or Orps BTW. Um, Yeah, just make sure. Last game we had an issue where Sasusun had like moved his <laughs> his boats into the lake, and he he lost his boat obviously to my submarine. Uh, the reason the submarines are here is just so I can see greater portions of the map. Uh, the submarines have radar and they give permanent vision of the map, which is nice. So uh, let's take a look at the spawn locations. So yeah, uh, these two can definitely bear down on the Spanish, and I don't think the Dutch, especially with this jungle blocking, will be in a really a position to uh, interfere. The other thing to consider is the skill of the players. Uh, we have two very powerful team captains on each team, uh, and that would be Saucyson and Panopticon. Oh, so I guess they might end up in a 1v1 over here. Uh, this might be an interesting front. But yeah, those are the two team captains. They're very, very uh, strong, above-average players. And then you have three, uh, yeah, like, uh, players of about the same skill. Like, probably below-average players. But um, the way I made the teams, I assumed... I don't think I've actually ever played a game with Gunnar Biebs, but I've, I've heard it's good. Uh, so we have Gunnar Biebs here, and then we have Meat. So I was banking that those two would be better than the other three. Or maybe not... Or just like almost as good as the other three, and then maybe Saucy Sun is very slightly better than Panopticon. Anyway, um, so yeah, but mostly you can just assume that SOS, Orbs, Gunner Beebs, Meat, and uh, Still Token will be operating at about roughly the same kind of skill level handicap. Uh, and so based on that, uh, 
you can kind of compare them to each other. Like if one player starts really proving themselves in this game and like kind of standing out from the pact, you'll know that that's them outperforming their expectations and not just like, oh, they're an amazing player and so they're expected to do that. So, um, Saw so Season was actually complaining about his land here. Uh, I'll have to teach him how to play Floodplain starts because Floodplains are totally doable. You just have to know how to work them. Uh, because there's like high growth but low productivity, so it's a bit of a trade-off, but you can definitely turn it into something good. Uh, so for land, for Panopticon, seems like standard kind of, uh, floodplain, or sorry, standard bonus grassland river. That's like your standard start in QC. He's got plenty of forest to work with. Going for that quick second city. I think he's doing a one-chop build, which is my favorite. <laughs> uh, so the one-chop is warrior, worker, granary, and then usually another military unit, and then a settler. And we've got meat here. Uh, also standard land. He doesn't. He only has one forest though, so uh, if he needs the chops, that might be a bit of an inconvenience. And oh, uh, so orbs went for a fast second city. Uh, ivory is like bonus food in QC, uh, just to make plain starts a little bit better. So he might be able to make good use of what he's got here, especially with that fast second plant. Gunner Beebs. Uh, oh, he can even skip his granary if he's playing it right. Um, he can grow one per turn without a granary, so he might be doing that. That's why he has a settler out early. Uh, Gunner Beebs, we'll see what he's up to. <laughs> Hold up. Okay, uh, we don't want to contact him end of turn, but we can contact him now. Great, I don't want to give him any texts. Uh, but what I do want to do is spy on him a little. So if he has his uh, granary out, then... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Embassy it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's got his granary out, so he's uh, playing this quite well. Going for a, a quick granary and then a second city. Yeah, sorry about that, man. <laughs> uh, generally, the way it works is, like, sometimes it seems like you'll make a misclick if somebody does diplomacy, but normally it won't uh, fuck you over. Uh... Like, if you're holding down, like, the, like, let's say, okay, let's say you're doing this, and you're, like, hold, holding down the move, and you're, like, trying to find, and then someone diplomacies you, you might think, shit, my move, unit will end up moving over here without me intending to, if I accept this diplomacy, but that's not the case. Uh, it will kind of reset things for you. Two tiles away. I really, yeah, that's a good, smart move by uh, Orps. Now, the one thing I don't like here is he planted on the ivory, uh, which you do get bonus food from ivory in QC. He might not know that, and uh, you don't want to plant on bonus food. Bonus production, you can plant on. Uh, bonus commerce, you're definitely encouraged even to plant on, but um, don't plant on uh, bonus food if you can help it. So... Uh, yeah, I think what's going to happen here is, like, uh, SOS is kind of, like like I said, a less skilled player. Uh, normally, they play very defensively. So what I'm worried is going to happen is it's basically just going to be a 3v3. Like, they're not going to have much of an impact in the game until maybe very late. Like, I, get, I guess they could sense the boats against Panopticon, but Panopticon's their ally. Uh, they could boat Gunner Beebs, but that'd be kind of around the horn here. So, yeah. And uh, Orps is also their ally. I guess, yeah, their best bet would be to just try to 1v1 against Gunner Beebs. So when I say 1v1, what I'm referring to is a situation where um, both you and the enemy are committing the bulk of your units against each other. Uh, so if he can force, uh, if he can send enough units that Gunner Beebs has to commit that many units himself, then Gunner Beebs cannot apply pressure to the Spanish. Uh, so Panopticon found him. Yep. Nice. Uh, Saucy has claimed this tropical fruit. 
a very good tile to have. So in QC, generally the bad tiles aren't as bad as they would be. Uh, so jungles are a little bit better, uh, tundra is a bit better, and desert's a bit better, and marsh too. So one of the ways that works is the, the tropical fruit, which provides a, a big bonus in uh, production and food in QC. Yeah, because before we made that change, it was just like awful if you spawned in the jungle. It's just impossible to claw your way out of. Uh, but with this, at least you get like a reward. Like especially when you cut down the jungle, it becomes a very productive land. Uh, but it still can't really match the like the pure grassland to start in terms of like uh, just grassland starts are so effective because you can go as fast as possible. Like you can just start roading on your enemies and you can expand very fast and start like roading towards key resources or cut off your enemies or attack your enemies. Uh, just the extra mobility you get from roading over flat land just, is just so useful, so. Yeah, I'd much rather spawn <laughs> in uh, grassland or even plains. Plains is a bit buff too, because like I said, the ivory uh, is now provides bonus food. Oh, so let's see the land up here. Didn't put any submarines, but it's worth taking a look at. Okay, just a little tundra peninsula. Okay, already we see uh, meat expanding in the direction of uh, orbs. So they're now four tiles are separating their borders from each other. So that could be, uh, this is definitely going to be a major front in this game. Oh! So actually an interesting opening from uh, Panopticon. He went straight east. Oh, I actually like this play. So he's going to be able to actually relieve a lot of pressure that would otherwise be placed on orbs. Uh, and I think Saucy Sun's ability... I mean, Saucy Sun sees him. So maybe Sasusin will understand the importance of putting pressure on Panopticon. Uh, but otherwise, Sasusin is just left alone. Which, if his teammates hold out okay, that would be good. But I'm not confident that they can. Yeah, and uh, Still Token is also a little alone here. There's just a lot of land between Token and, uh, and Sasusin. So I, I don't expect this to be a very active front, although it would be a good question as to where um, where is uh, Token going to commit his units if he builds any offensive units at all? Okay, so let's try to get some spies up and running. <laughs> uh. Nice. <laughs> we don't have to do another inconvenience at the Japanese. I've inconvenienced them enough with that embassy. Yeah, this is actually interesting. Oh, yeah, we instantly got contact with all the civs in the map. I didn't have to contact them. I think that's the doing of the submarines. Like, the submarines see... Or maybe because I have the submarine in enemy land. Yeah. And the Dutch I got it with first. Huh. That's interesting. I'm not sure why that is. Um, but for whatever reason, we don't have to, like, right-click on people and do diplomacy with them to actually have contact. So we can go straight into the espionage. So yeah, um, I actually think I agree with this move out of uh, Panopticon. I mean, given he missed the timing window here, it makes sense to be expanding towards the uh, the Spanish. Sorry, like he would have need pre-roads if he wanted to place his second uh, settler over here. 
Uh, and like in southwest or southeast, that's across a river. So uh, it makes more sense to be moving east and to get the movement bonus of the roads that he has. Uh, so Token's actually on three cities. Uh, and there are three apart too. Why is Token growing so fast? I guess Token's in a very safe position. Uh, yeah, he knows he's alone. He knows he's got his ally over here. Nobody north of him. He must be feeling pretty good right now. And Gunner Beebs. Yeah, standard, pretty expansionist build. Uh, let's see. I think Saucy Lunison was a little slowed down. He moved two tiles. He spawned here and he wanted to move to the, the banana, I think. But that should give him higher production having that banana. So, oh, the other thing, like I wouldn't necessarily do this myself, but uh, it's an interesting choice that he actually went for the chops, here, here, and here. I think actually, yeah, he went for a lot of early workers, and so because of that, uh, he will have access to those tiles now. But that's slowed him down a bit. So yeah, you're seeing another settler coming out of uh, Salamanca now. So yeah, despite being the team captain, he's uh, behind on growth just a little, but he should catch right up. Meat play defensive? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense uh, with... Uh, oh god, yeah, there's only two tiles separating them now. Uh, so it'll be kind of interesting to see... If Meat could put a city, like, right here and here, that would be really good, getting some uh, good defensive spots uh, and the ability to expand. Yeah, I guess I didn't really see this one. I, like, I, I have to design these maps. That's how I had the submarines uh, for vision. Uh, I didn't really see this at the time. That I mean, it makes sense for the the player who spawns here to expand east. Uh, I didn't realize how much pressure that would put on the player who spawns here, because it takes away the the good land. Yeah, I remember I added that sugar manually, just being like, well, if the player spawns here, there's not really going to be much land in this direction that's any good. Uh, but I figured they'd be able to access the the incense, maybe. Because that's like, what? Five tiles away? One, two, three. Oh, also five, five tiles away. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Ooh. Uh, so Beebs is running into some issues with his... I'm going to call him G. Beebs. As opposed to his brother, Jay Biebs. Anyway, uh, running some issues with Civil Disorder. He did go for a temple, too. Uh, yeah, that's not personally what I'd do, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. They're cheap for Japan, too, so it could be easy to get that out. And uh, players who don't play in my playstyle definitely benefit more from temples than I do. Like, I'm super great at watching my happiness like a hawk and making sure I don't fall into Civil Disorder. Uh, but it's nice for some players to have that buffer. And also the extra culture. Uh, could be nice sometimes. So uh, SOS is still on two cities. I'm not seeing any barracks coming out of them, though. Oh, no, they got three. That's the right thing to do in this spot. Um, if you spawn all alone, you don't want to focus on military at all. Uh, you just want to grow, 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 and you'll know when you start running into some issues. You just have to watch out for boats, mostly, is the big thing. Have sentries up. Okay, it looks like we've got most of our spies out. Just one more should do the trick. Nice, we got them all. Uh, any fourth cities coming out just yet? Oh, yes, from Panopticon. Ooh, Saucyson's having happiness issues. Yeah, I mean, I think this is looking bad for uh, 
Team Team Dark. Because you're just going to see some... Oh, five cities out already. Wow. Uh, okay, so you got... G Beeps has got uh, four. Sauces and got, got his fourth. Yeah, turn 17, I guess, is the uh, <laughs> the turning point. Uh, Orbs has his fifth. And Orbs is already starting to feel the pressure a little bit. Uh, the nice thing about playing on the smaller team... Did I just say a boat instead of a boat? God, the Canadian in me is showing. The nice thing about being on the smaller team is it's a lot easier to achieve contact. So uh, as soon as g uh made contact with the Ottomans, he knew, okay, my warrior is free to do whatever, and he went, and he's no, now harassing the Spanish a little bit. It's a pain where it's like, oh, I want to go take that worker, but uh, I need to contact my ally. And so you got to kind of choose, which is more important. Yeah, it looks like uh, Panopticon has his barracks out too. Uh, this is going to be very strong. Oh, and Meat went for the for Bursa. Okay. So on the one hand, I wouldn't want uh, Panopticon planting like three tiles for my capital or whatever. So it's good he's taking control of this land. Uh, yeah, this is kind of like an elbow too. I'm actually liking this. Um... Basically, he, like, sets the stake in the ground, saying, like, I'm going to protect this. And um, Panopticon can't really counter. Because, like, I don't think he's in a position with his archers to take the city. And he can no longer, like, if the city wasn't there, he could just walk in and pillage. But that's not really an option anymore, because they've got these two units blocking uh, along the, uh, the choke point here. So if he wants to come, he has to go around. And if he does go around, then... Ottomans have all that vision because of the city. Gun hit Seville. Uh, I don't think that will work. One of those is across the river, too. Yeah. He's got two wars. He's not an idiot. Okay, he killed one warrior. <laughs> uh, but now he can just counterattack, you know? Yeah, it's what they call defeat in detail. So in military strategy, what that means is, like, basically you, you have more guys in the right place. Uh, so when you're attacking a player or pillaging a player or scouting or harassing a player, what you have to be realize is that uh, that's he had a certain advantage. Like, right, he was parking his warrior right here. That's like 50% defense bonus from the fortification and from the forest. Uh, so what that means is that if Orps wants to attack into you, Orps is at a disadvantage. But the defending player does have the advantage of defeat in detail. Basically, they have more units localized at their own base, obviously. And so they can... Uh, basically, if you do like an even exchange where you both lose a unit and both have a damaged unit, then they can finish you off. Okay, um, I'm not really agreeing with this out of orps. Like, these are good city spots. All great choices here. This is pretty far. And if he's planting far, it should be on the hill. It should be here or here. He's also giving up his only forest. Like, uh... If the forest is, like... Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna have this city, which is, like, bad land, basically, right? You're gonna want that city to at least be able to lose the forest tile to get, like, the extra shields. And then it can, like, pump out warriors or archers or something. Uh, but he's not doing that. And I believe we have access to the information about where the resources are. Yeah, like we know the horse is over here. Uh, there's iron over here. No, there's no iron here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think he... 
We'll see how much pressure Gunnar Biebs applies. Because uh, if it's a lot of pressure, then this will be a point of weakness. If it's not much pressure, then Orps isn't really in any danger. Uh, like, because Meat will be fight busy fighting Panopticon. Okay, uh, he's cleaned up the enemy units, and so he's gone for another settler. So yeah, he's really focusing on expansion here. Can't say I disagree with that. Uh, that's always good to do. Even if you're under this level of pressure... Maybe not if you're under this level of pressure, though. Yeah, I'd figure he'd want to exp meet would want to expand over here. He's got plenty of land. He can even expand as far as Japan because they're on the same team. Uh, there's not much good land between him and Norps. Be nice to have the city on the hill right here, though. Secure the the sugars. Have the lake, I guess. Yeah, you're seeing a lot more cities coming up from Panopticon. And Saucyson is still on four cities, crucially. Uh, oh, he's roading north, though. Yeah, when I generated the map, it was just like a, a thick band of jungle across here. So I decided to like open it up a little bit with some grassland and then some plains. Uh, so what that means is that he actually does have the option of uh, opening up this front. Uh, him and the Mongols and the Iroquois. Uh, not much going on between Token and Saucyson just yet. Uh, you'll see that they're, the two players are just establishing um, sentries near the other Civ. That's just like, if Saucyson has these warriors here, he knows that if Token sends like a bunch of horsemen, then he'll spot those horsemen and be able to prepare for that attack. And so that's why the sentry is so important. And because there's just such a massive amount of land between Token and Saucy, uh, there's not much that Token can do to stop the sentrying. It's like if there's like, for example, uh, between Gunnar Biebs and Orips. If uh, Gunnar Biebs just put his units on these two mountains, then Orips would have no good sentry spots. Or at least not any optimal sentry, sentry spots. Uh, but there's just so many mountains between... Uh, Saucyson and still token that still token doesn't really have that option so they just kind of let each other uh sentry each other not really much else they can do okay so uh spain's pretty six cities they might uh that's as many as panopticon <laughs> uh they're kind of behind in worker moves though and their terrain just isn't as good that's not his fault though Oh, behind an army, too, but, uh, okay, hmm. Let's see. Uh, so we went for the, the, the plains plant rather than the hill plant. I'm not really going to agree with that. Uh, so what's going to happen is you're going to have Keshex coming out of Kazan in the late game. So they can move into turn and then attack again at the start of next turn. So their double move would be bam, 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 bam. So uh, they can't reach Istanbul and they can't reach Edrun. They can reach Bursna, Bursa and Iznik, though. Um, I guess the one advantage here is that the two vulnerable cities will be within reinforcing range of each other. Yeah, uh, that might actually justify uh, that decision then. But just having the city on the hill... Normally, you can just like stack, put most of your stack between the two cities and then reinforce from that stack as you need. Yeah, you could have done here and here and then reinforced from this city onto that one if needed. Because uh, you will want this city and then orbs might feasibly attack you. So, yeah, another settler coming out of Spain. Oh, okay. Uh, so Panopticon is actually going for a city on the iron here. It's going to be bonus shields in the city squ uh, square, so that's pretty good. 
Nice. And Saucy Sun is catching up in terms of expansion. Uh, more settlers coming out of Spain. He could put a city here next to that banana. That'd be pretty good. Just meat because of the threat from Panopticon is not in any, or is not un, in any position to be able to really contest these city spots from Orps. Uh, meat is also lacking horses, and they probably have a pretty good idea that this is the case. Oh, interesting. Uh, we got some horses coming out of Gunner Beebs, though. And interest, uh, crucially, um, Orps is not sentried. So normally you'd want at least some units on the iron, you know, uh, or definitely on the iron, uh, but on the hills, maybe one here. Uh, Orps has not opted for that. So we'll see how ex uh, successful this attack might be. Gunner Beams himself actually has good vi vision from this warrior over here. And they're just closing out the medieval era now. Ah, okay. So we're now seeing some pressure from the Mongols onto the Iroquois. Oh, okay. Uh, so the interesting thing is that the Mongols are militaristic and the Iroquois are not. They're agricultural, which is often like a good early game trait for that bonus food. One bonus food isn't, isn't as much in QC as it would be in the base game. Because uh, all the tile yields are doubled other than that bonus food from agricultural. But... Um, Still pretty damn good. Uh, but it's just not really good in combination with floodplains. Because you already have the food you need in floodplains. So because of that, I'd say that... Uh, Panopticon is the better early game Civ here. In terms of putting pressure. And he's exploiting that by moving on to Saucyson. At the same time though, Saucyson... Uh, he did go for the like the early chops. He should have production to deal with this, but he's fighting a lot of barbarians here. So um, be, he might be able to pillage uh, Panopticon, that is. Oh yeah, you're seeing lots of uh, horsemen coming out of Gunner, gunner Beebs. Uh, so we can actually threaten Seville, too. Uh, it would be across the river, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, but still. I mean, it's either across the river or onto the hill, and I'd much rather across the river. Because the river bonus is 25% defense, and the hill bonus is uh, 50. Sorry, that's not really a fair comparison. Because uh, you get 10 from being on planes, too. So this is 35, and that's 50. Uh, on the other hand, it might be worth giving up 15% defense bonus to the enemy in exchange for... Because Orps is, in a in, is not in a position where he can uh, reinforce Valencia. Because of the river blocking. <laughs> Actually, I have some pressure from meat going on. Uh, I don't think they've been communicating at all. Uh, if they have, yeah, can you send to Orps? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Orps is going to be distracted on this front. Yeah, his only archers are cleaning up this mess in four turns. I uh, could probably go sooner than that, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, dude, that's plenty. Two horsemen would even be enough. Uh, barbarian's pain in the ass. <laughs> let's let's just take a look at Valencia and see. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, he has literally one warrior there. Uh, and he's fighting two barbarians of his own. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think these barbarians are actually going to fortify right now. Let's check this out. Like, you can go for Mercia here, but uh, that's just across the river and on a hill, so. But yeah, uh, Barbarians only move if there's, like, something on the same diagonal as them. Uh, northwest, northwest, southeast diagonal. Uh, and I'm not seeing any units like that. Yeah, not here. Uh, unless I mean the diagonal probably goes pretty far. Let's uh let's keep track of that. Yeah, I know it looks like it goes right off the map. Uh so these barbarians are just gonna fortify, which is good for gunner beebs. Good for Gunnar Beebs that uh, he moved this unit off the mountain, otherwise they'd path towards the warrior. Unless is one of my... Oh, I got the submarine right here. I wonder if that counts. <laughs> nope, don't do that. Ah, great lighthouse. Why are your scores so low? Uh, Meat's doing fine. Oh, Meat, yeah, he's under pressure. Yeah. If uh, they had engineering and they could like see each other's maps, it would be a lot clearer. In QC, engineering is when map trading and map uh, map trading and contract trading are available. Pano is on me. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but on the flip side, he has been able to apply pressure to... Can't win like this. <laughs> uh, team's doing pretty good. Haven't been paying attention to these two. Uh, yeah, as long as this attack on doesn't on Spain doesn't work. Huh. Barb's blocking, yeah. Um, yeah, like, I've talked about this before, but I think, like, the big thing about spectator mode is it, like, made me underestimate... It made me understand the importance of good timing. Uh, like, just getting things done quickly. Like, uh... I don't know if you could have seen those warrior barbarian horsemen, but it's, like... Let's say he had the choice between Seville and, uh, oh sorry, Mercia and Seville. It's better to go for, and Seville is the one that's not on a hill, right? So if his extra positioning takes like an extra turn and risks him getting attacked by barbarians and wasting even more time, uh, then it's better just to like go for the, the less defended city. Because uh, the early attack is always the, you just get a massive advantage from that. We're going to start to see more roads coming out from uh, from Spain. More military units, obviously. Although he seems to be a bit lacking here. Okay, yeah, he's got the road uh, connecting these two cities.
here, I mean, he sees what you're doing. Uh, the stack can be a big distraction. Yeah, that might actually work if he, like, goes and starts pillaging. Uh, if that's the case, then they'll be quite useful. He, I don't think he can take Santiago, though. He's continuing to expand here. This is a pretty greedy play coming out of Spain. Nothing is really safe except south, which is blocked by marsh and barbarians. I'd get at least more roads out, you know, uh, before more cities. If not more units. I mean, it's one thing if you can't, like, defend uh, the city because you don't have enough units, but... Um, it's another if you just physically cannot move your units between cities, and that's what fucks you. Because that's a very easy problem to solve. Uh, although the river really blocks him in in that way, too. I guess of all the places to put a city, this is like, one of the safest, maybe? Uh... Yeah, I guess, no, here is safer. Uh, both would be, able, if he had horsemen, he could attack both. And then Gunnar Biebs can also attack this one with horsemen. Uh, he might not know that Meat does not have horses. And with that knowledge, this makes this city spot, like, decisively safe. Let's check the north of this peninsula. No barbarians there. Great. Uh, so Panopticon got an early lead in terms of expansion, but he's kind of sitting on it. Eight cities. And he's allowing Saucis in to catch up. I uh, wish we could check land area. That'd be nice to like get all the statistics about the game. I'm first in approval rating. Not surprising since I'm uh, dumping like the most metric fuck ton of concentrated happiness into my civilization as possible. Oh, interesting. Um, Team Dark is actually behind in tech. Yeah, uh, Team Light has been medieval for quite some time now, and Team Dark still does not have the, the next era techs. They do get a free tech, though, uh, from the Ottomans. And the enemy civ gets no free tech, actually. Hmm. So they'll catch up a little bit. Uh, the one thing is, like, if you get to the medieval era, like, before, like, turn 23, um... It's just so pathetically slow to research the medieval era text that it doesn't really put you in that much of a lead in terms of text. So even when like the stars align, like you get construction from a hut or something like that, and you get contacts instantly with the rest of your team, even when that happens, uh, it doesn't do you too much good. Because it's just like a phase of the game where your commercial capacity is increasing rapidly. Are they going to go? Is he going to go for attack here? Um, see if. Holy shit, can he take the city? Uh, looks like he got some bad orange. Jesus. Holy shit. I don't want you. I want to see. I don't want to see Chris Orps complaining about <laughs> bad RNG ever again. How uh, was this Vinit Valencia or Santiago? He kept two archers crucially, which means that... Uh, he can still pillage with them. Like, they'll provide the defensive bombard bug for each other and be harder to take out. Go Santiago. Yeah. Oh, he just had a bunch of warriors in there. I know what. 
Oh, okay. He also had another archer in there, so defensive bombard uh, came to play. But yeah, I mean, this is why you don't do slow attacks like that in QC. Like, orbs are just so much time to prepare. Speaking of preparation, he's moving his spearmen over from Valencia. At literally any point in time, Gunner Beeps can just go attack. I mean, he's growing behind this, at least. Uh, he's got some decent cities out. He should have decent control over this iron. Yeah, he can go here and then, or here, and then have his pick any of these four cities, whichever he wants. Uh, Zaragoza would be my uh, idea. I'm going to try to attack meat, probably. Hmm. He seems to have stacked up a bunch of swordsmen. Let's see what's in Bursa. Uh, it's Ottomans, Spy, Investigate City, Bursa. Yeah, not much at all. He spent a lot on Spain. Why are you so slow with Pana? Just made two settlers. Yeah, I mean, Gunnar Biebs is definitely one of the better players on uh, the map right now, it seems. But it really seems the case that uh, Panopticon is in a position to impact the game, and Sosisun is not. I guess we lost, lol. We can't tech. Why not? They're in the next era. They got something for free. Yeah, he should be able to tech fine. I don't know why Salsusum can tech. Uh, this looks like it shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> no, no stream. Uh, okay, so let's see. Yeah, the Mongols, they're not attacking. I think they're, this was just activated because he had just upgraded it. So let's take a look. 15 swordsmen, 12 archers. He's got six archers. I think two of them are in this land. Oh, no, they're at home. Or is he's walking them home? Ah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess they got feudalism for free. I mean, like, Saucison is the team captain. He should really be doing some sort of teching. Uh. <laughs> well, why aren't you... I really don't get why, like... They got a free tech, so it must. If he said he's doing engineering, why are you? T I mean, you need two people to tech. Uh, I assume he meant what? Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's that's the solution we needed. <laughs> then they got feudalism for free. Okay. Uh, let's see, army of the the differences. Yeah, this isn't a. Oh, that's a lot of workers, I guess. So seventeen relevant units versus. Yeah, about sixteen from Japan. And then. Thirty-five from the Mongols, and most of them are swordsmen. So it's pretty scary. 
Jesus, Spain is so weak. Uh, France, yeah. But I mean, France and the Dutch just aren't in a position to impact the game in any way. They need to be starting to road north immediately. Or at least expand in that direction, you know? He's expanded one city in this direction. Not even one in this direction. I've been in that spot meet, you know, <laughs> where someone keeps on promising that they're going to attack, but they're not attacking. Have these... Mo I think he's waiting for this guy to heal. That must be it. It's literally empty. <laughs> Building more settlers. Like, this is so close to being a competitive game, but... <laughs> Okay, he definitely needs walls in Bursa. This is a mistake. Yeah. So in QC, all the unique units are in the medieval era. Uh, so there's like a couple of ancient era civs. Uh, so the Iroquois, the Greeks, and the Carthaginians. And they get their regular unique unit in the medieval era. Yeah, that's good information for Panopticon. He knows that uh, he's not in any threat of like mounted warriors streaming into his over his borders and into his land. And just in general, um, I'd say Sosisin actually has some sort of advantage here because... He's only focused on the one front, whereas uh, Panopticon has devoted a lot of his resources over here. So yeah, I guess, like before we started the observer mode, we didn't really realize, or I didn't realize how important timing was, but we always had this expression that two thirds of the time, the team with the plan is the team that wins. Just having any sort of plan makes it likely that you're gonna win the game. Because uh, you're like investing your resources into a to achieve a specific goal, rather than just like doing whatever you know. And I think that's that makes a lot more sense to me now. If they had any plan, like if they had agreed upon attacking orbs at the same time, or if these two had ganged up on meat at the same time. Or they had been in communication and Meade had been saying, please put pressure on Panopticon or else I will die. I mean, that's what I try to say in my games. Uh, and that would have been really helpful for their team. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the issue I run into is people don't really understand what pressure means. Like, it basically just means, like, having units in their land or near their land. Uh, such that they have to, like, use their own resources and keep their own units around to deal with your units. Even if you don't really accomplish anything, just the fact that they're keeping you're keeping their units busy uh, means that they can't be the enemy can't be attacking you if your ally is applying pressure. It also means as if, that if uh, the enemy does focus on you directly, that um, the player who wanted to apply pressure can just like turn around and say, "Oh, I have enough units to kill," and they just go kill. So yeah, uh, for example, if you just rode it up to Darhan, there doesn't even have to be any units on the road, other than a couple of warriors to protect it from barbarians, but um, just like the threat that that would create, you don't have to like have a, a stack of archers, but you have to at least have the threat that you might have a stack of archers, uh, and then Panopticon will station units in Darhan, and then he can't do a proper sledge against the Ottomans. Here, he, he's just setting things up. A little too slowly, but um, he's going to have his choice between Burza 
and isnic, which means, oh god, he's just sending his units over to orbs, okay. So I think the situation we're in here, the likely, the likely one, is that, uh, Jesus, I mean, this isn't going to work, he's just going to die. <laughs> Uh, but Panopticon's instant reaction is going to be, I need to kill Meat. Doing libraries to tech fast. Don't really think you guys understand how dire the situation is. How uh, What a knife's edge that Orps is playing on and that Meat is playing on to a lesser extent. Like, just the massive balls that Meat has to, like... The enemy team captain settled right next to you, has roaded you, has threat, has like melee threat on two of your cities. Uh, I'll talk about different types of threat. Like for example, uh, Saucyson right now has horse threat uh, on Panopticon. Like he could just show up with a stack of horsemen and attack Darhan. Like move them in end of turn and then attack again at the start of next turn. Let's see, I didn't place here. Boom, boom, end of turn. Boom, boom, start of next turn. He doesn't have melee threat, though, because um, he, like, if he, he put a stack of melee units here, then obviously the Mongols see it, and then that vision uh, reduces the threat, basically, because you can reinforce against whatever the threat is. So for that reason, we say that he has melee threat over Bursa and Iznik, because as far as Meat knows, any turn now, uh, Panopticon can just show up with a, a big stack of melee units. Melee being like archers or swordsmen or medieval infantry. And I don't think Meade is really properly addressing this threat because he's not even building walls. <laughs> Unless it's like some kind of big balls uh, bluff play. Like I've done that before where it's like you purposely don't build walls in a city. And if you like if you see your enemy not building walls in a city, you think, oh, fuck, they must have that city really well defended. If that's the one city they're not building walls. <laughs> nope, Panopticon didn't attack. Did Biebs? Oh yeah, here he is, uh, on Valencia. Okay, so we took a, took a size 2. Uh, so Orps has the option of retaking. And Orps actually has some horsemen. They're regulars, but this is on it. Like, regular horsemen against veteran horsemen on a hill... Now he's just trying to clear out the the Dutch. Can you throw anything at me? <laughs> oh god! Well, yeah. Trust me. Uh, meat is or meat is distracted. Yeah, he can't guard all that. He just... Two fucking settlers. Oh god, yeah, take these warriors home. <laughs> yeah, this is an example of... Orps was not expecting the, the threat, uh, the horse threat. Uh, you pretty much need a road for there to be melee threat. Because uh, if you just, like... Like, if you put your... Stack of melee units here end of turn, then he has two turns to react to that. Um, uh, but yeah, there's just all those, this horse threat, like any fog of war area, as far as, uh, Orps is concerned, could have a bunch, a stack of horsemen that could attack his cities whenever they wanted to. And not only that, like he knew that Gunnar Biebs had a unit here. So basically Gunnar Biebs could see his vulnerable cities and see that Orps did not have sentries. Uh, so I think that's a, a, a misplay. Yeah, I don't... Hmm. So the one thing about melee units here is that he's going to take Iznik for sure. I mean, we'll see what's in Iznik. Might be a small stack of archers or something.
No, just a bunch of warriors. Yeah, he'll take Iznik, and then instantly he'll be alerted to the fact. Oh god, that's pretty scary. <laughs> oh yeah, he's fucked. Um, if that was stack was a little bit smaller, uh, then Meat could like once he loses Iznik, he has time to react and prepare his defenses in Burza or whatever city that uh, Panopticon is going for. Seems like he almost has iron, but it's just a, a smidge too late. So let's see what happens with orbs. Oh, two spearmen. Uh, but I think Meat's going to get the city. <laughs> Can he? Oh, no, he, he got Barcelona, yeah. That's bad form. That's really bad form. Because um, we got the NPC city bug here. Uh, he could have actually taken Valencia. I'm not sure if it was an empty city bug or if he just emptied his city. But <laughs> it's over now. Uh, hold on, Saucy Sin. You're not out of the woods just yet. <laughs> This is probably better because uh, Gunnar Beebs, G Beebs gets uh, Barcelona. Uh, which, because the stack is melee units, not horsemen, I don't think it's under any threat. He should be able to reinforce it. Uh, the good news is these two teams, like Saucyson and Gunnar Beebs, are the ones teching on their team. Uh, Panopticon hit me with a 20 stack. I think that was more than 20. Yeah, so you got 5. 10. 15. 20. Uh, so it looks like... 27. Yeah, 30, basically. Plus what's ever in the city, or whatever he lost in that attack. Probably not much. Yeah, so it's looking like it's going to be... Oh, God, he cut the roads and everything. Yeah, Bursa's fucked. <laughs> like 40. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a mixed stack. <laughs> uh, I think there's like a vine like that where somebody receives clearly a debilitating injury and the guy's like are you okay <laughs> I think these two says might not have contacts with each other uh Sasusun and Gunnar Beebs so that'd be very bad news for their team if that's the case Let's see what all the fuss is all about uh Should be a good game. I think this I can post this one. It's been competitive so far. Okay, if they're lucky, they'll be able to get contact from each other um, if they don't have it. Okay, uh, yeah, that's, he's fucked. <laughs> At this point, you just start suiciding your units against the, uh, the Mongol units, because it's like, you're gonna lose all your units when you die anyway. So QC is two-city elimination, in case you guys, uh, don't know. Uh, is he not attacking? Huh. <sighs> 
I was wondering if he like stopped to like catapult the city or something like that. Okay. Great. Um, I'm wondering if this is... So that's definitely... I mean, Orbs had more potential to grow there. Uh, so losing him was a, a bit of a setback, but like his potential for growth was kind of... Uh, unwise. Like The fact that he grew up so much was a bad idea. And so... Uh, it's not a surprise that that didn't really pay off for their team. On the other hand, Meat, uh, he was a little bit smaller, so it's less of a loss to their team, in a sense. Do we have a C route? Oh, I'm not likely. Uh, they do if they have the coast clear, actually. Not over here, but uh, over here. That's a long way, though. I mean, even I don't have that clear. <laughs> we'll see if they have any Karas. Yeah, I guess like when I made the start location, I didn't expect this player to spawn with enemies both here and here. Yeah, they actually had time to get it at the start of the turn. <laughs> like Panopticon held off on killing. Why are you weak to everybody, Panopticon? You shouldn't be. Twenty medieval infantry should be stronger than everybody else's armies combined. C two three. His closest unit is in his city. <laughs> I'll go through with the horsemen. Yeah, he's got this path here. It should be safe getting contact. It's just going to take some time. Uh, Saucy is doing chivalry, and he's doing engineering, and they both have feudalism. Uh, so he can actually do the bottom text without any interference. Yeah, unless um, Saucy is just not going to have engineering for a little bit while. Uh, so no maps. They also didn't get maps off of Meat before he died. Uh, Meat probably had valuable information about like what... The Mongol land looks like. And now they're not going to know. So yeah, they definitely dropped the ball by not getting the contacting meat as soon as the turn started. Like when meat said I was going to die. Yeah, harbor's not going to work. You guys just straight up probably can't trade. Um, does everybody have all the resources they need? Okay, it looks like uh, SOS might be lacking. Oh, no, no, they got horses. Uh, holy shit. Does Panopticon not have horses? I didn't even consider that when I made the start locations, but I guess he might not. Oh, yeah, his... This is interesting, actually. Um... So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, six. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh I kind of fucked him with these spawn locations in terms of horses. Uh there's some here. Yeah, there's just no way the Civ was getting any horses. Uh unless they trade with their allies or unless they make like a, a quick play towards the horses over here. Which, given that this is expanding across a river, not super likely. Although this is across a river, too. Yeah, uh, the other team might not realize that, though. But yeah, I think all Panopticon, or all Panopticon has to do is walk his big-ass Doomstack over to Saucy Sun. He can just kill Saucy Sun. Uh, Saucy Sun's not in enough of a state to resist, and plus he can just reinforce with more units from his core. Um, 
Saucerson's late Golden Age because he's your Iroquois. Uh, Panopticon's not going to have a Golden Age himself, but it'll be even playing field at least. Yeah, I just can't. That would be the path to end the game for this Civ. Uh, what happens if he doesn't do that? What happens if he just uh, goes for a defensive type play? He just parks his units in his cities? Uh, I mean, in the long run, you're going to have Samurais coming out of Gunner g beebs but I don't think they can kill uh, the Dutch because the Dutch have iron. Uh, I don't think they could kill the Mongols if the Mongols are playing defensively. They could pressure the Mongols, though. Uh, so I think what happens then is that the Mongols stack up a ton of knights and start pillaging and causing issues. So yeah, if it's 2v1 and France does not get involved... Oh, I guess also uh, the Iroquois could just send a massive doom stack towards the French. The thing is, the Iroquois don't get their Golden Age until Astronomy. That's when you get the Mounted Warrior for the Iroquois. Uh, and by the time the Iroquois have astronomy, I mean, this team's definitely going to have astronomy. And by the time this team has astronomy, they can probably uh, trade tax or trade resources, you know, and get Panopticon his unique unit and get him his Golden Age. I'll probably be dead. It looks like he got time. If I don't get Shiv, then this game is over. Yeah, here's the here's the horseman. Hmm. I guess we'll see if there's any more action on this front. This is a good experience for Gunner Beebs, though. Getting his... Maybe not his first kill. I haven't seen all his games, but... Uh, as, like, a player who's, like, trying to prove himself. Getting a kill. That was, like, a well-executed uh, end-of-turn attack, too. So, um, congrats to him on that. That's how it's done. If any of you guys are, like, interested in playing and want to learn, just like that. Probably could have done that earlier, but I mean, as soon as he shows the horseman, it gives it away to uh, Orps. And Orps isn't really good at responding to threat. Uh, but if it was any other player, they would respond to the threat and like start defending the, their cities better. Uh, except maybe me sometimes. <laughs> My issue is I just build so many cities that I can't defend them all, but I guess that's what Orps did too. Anyway, uh, with reasonable assumptions about the player you're attacking... Gunner G. Beebs would probably figure that if he showed horses and the horses didn't take the city, then his any chance of like actually taking a city in the future would be gone, because he'd lo lose any element of surprise. Uh, <laughs> he's got iron now, that's good. And a nice core of cities. Uh, he's going to have some luxuries to back him up. He's got the furs. He will have the ivory. Two isn't that much, though. Let's see what uh, Saucy Sun has. Only three. Yeah, with the, with the gems. Yeah, he's got the gems already. Mongols and the Japanese are at war. Yeah, and here you're going to see... The importance of sentry ing and the importance of threat in informing gameplay decisions. So there's no roads between Iznik and Barcelona. Also, Gunnar Biebs has the more mobile units, so he has mostly he has vision control. Uh, so that means that he knows that Barcelona is not under threat unless he sees that threat coming from a million miles away. Because he knows the composition of the Mongol stack is mostly medieval infantry and archers. So those walk slowly. So he knows that if it's coming, he'll know like six turns in advance. Uh, so for that reason, if he didn't know that, let's say the, the stack was Keshix or Horseman or something like that, then he would have to like very desperately try to protect Barcelona 
because he wouldn't be able to know whether or not the Mongols were coming or not. So he'd be like slaving spearmen or slaving pikemen or whatever, and like just desperately trying to funnel them into Barcelona. Uh, but he doesn't need to do that. He doesn't need to overreact because he knows that the Mongols aren't coming. And he'd have to do that, like, if the Mongols had, like, Keshik's or Horsemen, he'd have to do that whether or not the Mongols were actually coming. Uh, the Mongols could just stay home and build, and he would still be overreacting. The other thing is with mobile units, of course, like I mentioned, it's easier to gain vision control. So if he had the Keshiks, he could easily take these hills. And then once he has these hills, uh, he could just show up on the doorstep of Barcelona any second without the Japanese having any warning. So we'll see if anything happens this front. Um, looks like he's moving over the big stack, definitely. Well, let's try this out. <laughs> uh, steel plans. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell him. Uh, so we got a lot of units here. Okay, only a couple here. So yeah, he is fully committed to moving back towards uh, the Iroquois front. Uh, we got a road coming out of the Japanese. They need to hook this ivory, so uh, two workers would be nice, but a one is, I mean, it's getting the job done, you know. Okay. Uh, so if he builds a road here, he's going to have threat onto the city. What's in Centralia? There's no walls in Centralia, so... Oh yeah, he's fucked if the, uh... Okay, walls next turn. He's still fucked if the Mongols attack, though. He's building a lot of spearmen. Oh, nice, I'm in the next era. <laughs> Hopefully the music just got a little better. Um, hmm. So I think this attack will succeed, uh, if he's going to attack. Uh, but if he fails, I still think the game is uh, in the, their team's favor. They just have so much more tech in the long run. Um, if Team Dark is behind in tech and behind in... Uh, just players in the map, military. Uh, the the one advantage that Team Dark does have is that their units are in a more relevant location. Although Japan's focusing on pikemen here, which I don't agree with at all. He's not really in, in, in any danger. Except maybe Barcelona, but um, he's not putting them in Barcelona. Yeah, he should be stacking... What I'd be doing if I was him is I'd turn off my tech after engineering and then stack up a bunch of horsemen and then upgrade them to samurais with the gold you saved once you get chillery from Saw Season. Maybe rode along here and put pressure on... There's a lot of different cities here and then Saw Season would have a lot of threat up here too. If both these civs have knights... Or knights and samurais, and Saucis and or and Panopticon does not, then that could result in a kill. Uh, the other path to victory that uh, Team Dark might have is if uh, Panopticon just wastes his time, and then uh, Saucis gets a solo kill onto Still Token. 
and Steel Token is still pretty weak. Ah, uh, the thing is that the French are going to have gun... Here, I'll, I'll grab... Grab gunpowder to see where the gunpowder is. Uh, but if the French have saltpeter, then they have the access to their unique unit, and that's very, very hard to kill, uh, especially with just knights. So yeah, I think a key part of the game is like if you're going to expand big, you better have good vision control in order to be sure that you're doing so safely. Like whenever I go for big expansions, like I just recognize that I can't defend all the crazy number of cities that I build. The best I can do is like watch to see where a possible attack might be coming from. Like just put sentry boats, sentry units on mountains. Uh because let's say I was Panopticon right now, right? He, he's got enough units to defend his land, but let's say I didn't. If I had sentries all around and I saw, yeah, there's a big stack of horsemen right here, it's like, okay, I need to defend these three cities and that's about it. And I can withdraw my units from other parts of my empire. Maybe move the stuff from Bursa here and then everything. Why is he stacking spikes? Hmm. He's just so big, too. Um, let's count the cities. 13 for the Iroquois. Yeah, he picked up two from the Ottomans here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he might be able to 2v1 or 1v2. They got contact, though, so that's good. <laughs> okay, they can finally see what the map looks like. That's good for them. <laughs> uh, is he actually attacking here? He doesn't seem to be building a lot more offensive units. St. Regis, St. Regis doesn't even have fucking walls. Okay, let's do a wonder check to see if anyone's came me. And then the Dutch are doing Utrecht. Eh. I mean, I guess he could be like attacking powerhouse for his team. That's really all I can think of here. Please tell me we're going to get some action on this front. <laughs> Let's see what he's got in Dar. Yeah, he's got a bunch more units along the road. He's got a tech lead. Go bottom text, please, and pressure pan. Yeah, that's just as scary as it was back on turn 25 or whatever. There better be walls next turn in St. Regis. Okay, yeah, next turn he's got him. Uh, he could attack the fortress end of turn. That'd be a good point where he could... I mean, from there he could threaten both the cities, but the downside there is that um, the Iroquois could still reinforce. 
Oh no, you can just put another unit onto the the fucking uh, the planes. Start to march further. Yeah, you can just do so much here. Okay, he upgraded some horses. He's got some knights out. That's good. Yeah, they're pretty expensive, but they're cheaper in QC because everything's cheaper. What's he doing? Oh, okay, I see. He's... Yeah, he's threatening Centralia first. And then in a turn, he moves on to St. Regis. Okay. Uh, I think based on the fact that... Uh, yeah, that's just so many medieval infantry. But there's walls here, and he's got a lot of pikemen. Yeah, he's getting low. Uh, now it becomes abrasive, like, can you reinforce force fast enough? Because he clearly has enough units to hold on. Yeah, now he can do the, the attack at Centralia that occupies these units over here. And it forces Saucy to, like, pay attention to more than one thing. Uh, slowing down his reinforcements. Oh, that's just the archers. Fuck. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's even attacked with... <laughs> Did he just take it with the archers alone? <laughs> You're fine, dude. You, you got this. Oh, no. He, he did do some attacks with the medieval infantry. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> he can clear off the fortress now. He has roads to the, the front line. Can attack this city, that city, this city. And his horses, too. He can get his golden age. Yeah, this game's over. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the trick. Okay, awesome. Uh, the enemy team should concede now. Uh, it's just G Beebs. <laughs> we'll see what his very humble reaction is. Good job on the kill, but uh, too little. Too yeah, it's, it was a bit too late. Like I think if he killed Meat earlier, then P or sorry, if he killed Orps earlier, then Meat would have been able to pivot his units back towards. I mean, you might not have been able to live, but at the very least, you would have been able to um, reduce the size of the stack and prevent this from happening. So, Okay. Uh, if he wants to stall the game, <laughs> he can do that. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to cast much longer. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you had a chance uh, five turns ago, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless he had like a big stack that I hadn't seen, like a stack of samurai. I don't see that really. And Panopticon could have just started slaving Keshix. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, wa we'll look at the game discussion. I want to, like, fill up a little bit more time so when people are, like, watching, won't be, like, instant spoilers. Like, of course this attack is going to work because the, the game ends in one minute. Ah. Uh, a lot of workers there, plus I need to attack this game. Yeah. I don't think he had bad land. I just think he, uh, he focused too hard on clearing the jungle early. You should just embrace the jungle. <laughs> And go for the quick extra cities early. Once you get the extra cities, they produce a lot of extra workers. And that makes it good. Uh, Panopticon's... His cap was not that good. Like, let's let's take a look at that. Yeah, he's just being humble. He had completely average land. Like, that's the same as meat. Except with a couple more forests. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have Saucy's land, to be honest. Um, uh, better than Paris. Uh, I'd rather have Amsterdam. 
with the hills. And yeah, James Beebs probably had the best line of the game. Lots of bonus grassland here. And I think some uh, forest, which he chopped. But yeah, uh, I guess in that sense, he probably had like above. Or upset the best capital, but he didn't really have much good to expand into. Uh, so I can see why he's complaining about the land, but uh, yeah, at the same time. Yeah, I don't think this is exceptional land. I just think Panopticon played this game very well, and that's why he won. So yeah, uh, congratulations to the winning team, and I hope you guys enjoyed.